What was life like in a German provincial town behind the mud and blood of the Western Front and beyond the battlefields of the Great War? Part of the answer can now be found in a unique collection of black and white images from the Museum of Photography in Braunschweig in Lower Saxony. They are the work of a gifted amateur, Kate Buchler, who documented life in the town, including wounded soldiers returning from the front. These enthralling and moving images are being shown in Britain for the first time. Mike Gibbs of History West Midlands talked to the museum's director, Barbara Hoffman Johnson, and assistant curator, Theresa Stipp, about Kate Buchler and her work. Teresa begins by describing the collection. What is very fascinating about the collection is that we essentially have a mixture of private photography and public photography, and this of a really high quality. If you compare it to other photographers at the time, we can see that Kat has a really artistic ambition in her photography that is trained by looking at paintings rather than photography itself. Barbara, could you describe the breadth and range of images that we see in this collection? It's an early example from the first part of the 20th century and represents her interest and her preoccupation with photography and thinking of a woman turning her interest into photography, high quality standard. This makes the collection very special. There are, of course a large group of private photographs connected to the family of Käthe Buchler because she was a mother of two children and she took photographs of the family during their life in Braunschweig but as well on their journeys to the seaside and to Switzerland and there was also a family tree living in England so we've got photographs of this connection or related to the family life. In terms of Cato, we have a woman who's self-trained? Not only, because she attended classes in the famous Lettuce School, which was a still existing school for photography in Berlin. So as soon as she started to work with photography at the beginning of the 20th century, she attended classes there. They were open for women as well, which wasn't usual in these days. So also, you know, the connection of the family to Volklander so that she could get these high-quality cameras to work with. And of course, when you have relatives working in this famous company, then you know, of course, that she was trained in a way uh, which you can compare to a, let's say, professional artist. So how is she only described as an amateur. In my opinion, that's not true because she was trained in the same way like an art student. So she paid for herself. Because of her wealthy background, she could do it. She could afford it. And during the First World War, was Braunschweig a community that was very involved in the war? Is it a community that was very typical of Germany at that time? I think Braunschweig had a special situation in World War I because it was um, a hospital city, Lazarettstadt. So there were a lot of soldiers, not only German soldiers, but also French and English soldiers coming through the station there. And they were helped out and fed. And then there was a big hospital as well. So I think people were had direct contact with the war more than in other cities because they were actually seeing soldiers and they were helping out as well. So we have a lot of women helping out in the hospitals. And this was right in the middle of the city. Then turning to her portrayal of the city and its people at that time, what are these images telling us about the home front in Germany? If you see the portraits, especially of the nurses and the soldiers in the hospital, the women helping out are of the same class as Kate Buchler herself. You even often see her daughter in the images as a nurse helping the soldiers. And they, the pictures are supposed to generate a feeling of connectedness, maybe, or to help make people engaged, to support the soldiers. So they do have an agenda as well. They're not only neutral documents, but they have a very positive view 
on the people that are portrayed and the people helping out. And with a background like Kate's, you would expect her to be photographing very staid or staged images of groups. Uh, you mentioned that she's got this feeling like a classical painter. How does the horror of the war, how is that portrayed in her work? I would say through these images of people participating in the social supporting, helping work, and then also the children collecting garbage in the city. I would say that she wasn't staging the sceneries. Of course, the people had to stand still in these days for a photograph, but sometimes you also see the blurring quality because people moved, and there are very few photographs where you can see that as well. But I would say that she was part of the life there, or she saw what happened, and yeah, she was supporting these groups of young people, of nurses and she was very aware of her responsibility to social life with these photographs i would say in terms of the wounded who are convalescing in the town does she portray fully do you think the horror of those wounds i think if you compare to other pictures that we have of world war 1 those are of course not images of the trenches i think they're way more subtle in their portraying so the horror is really, really taken aback. Also, I think she only took pictures of World War I, I think, in the early stages of the war. There are no pictures of her, I think, in 1917, 1918. So maybe the image also changed that she wasn't even able to take any more pictures of the war in the later stages. Maybe she wasn't even allowed in the hospitals anymore after... 1914, 1915. Yeah, I would agree to this because she also had to be allowed to take the photographs and she got the allowed from the Red Cross. But what is interesting, when I compare her photographs also to the other one displayed mm -hmm. in the university right now, yeah. where we have two photographers mm -hmm. who took photographs in Birmingham in the university, which was changed also into a war hospital. I would say that she is also more part of the groups. Mm -hmm. She's much more socially closer to these people, to the wounded soldiers. And sometimes you even can feel that probably in a way, if you can say that at all, the soldiers felt very comfortable. So what was her motivation in taking these photographs? Was she approaching the home front as a piece of art to be portrayed? Or was she doing it for other reasons? Did she feel a great social connection? I'd say there are several motivations. First, her interest in photography that she had been doing by then for over 10 years, I'd say. I think she started in 1902, 1903, maybe. So she was an experienced photographer at the beginning of the First World War. And then, of course, she was socially engaged and the pictures were taken to raise money so there are all those several different motivations, an artistic interest, in a social interest. She was part of the Red Cross as well, I think. So this was also something she knew, and it was easy for her to be part of it, to take pictures as well. And why was she stopped or prevented from continuing this in the latter part of the First World War? Do we have any documentary evidence or correspondence? No, we don't have, but I think at the end of the war, in the last years, it became really a fact, which was like every war, so cruel for the people that she couldn't attend or she couldn't be part of the hospital life with a camera. We always mm -hmm. have to imagine there comes a person with a camera and in these days it hasn't been a snapshot iPhone or whatever. It had been a very large box and on a tripod, and so this is really something to be aware of, that photography in these days was big effort to do, and also something which in the scene was a demonstration of something. And I think this is also a question of human ideas, whether to participate in hospital life with a camera. Could I ask you to summarise what you see as the importance of Cater 
in terms of our understanding of modern German history and secondly, her role as a photographer? I would say her role or understanding of history was reflected through her photography. So it started with a very personal life, which represents, of course, her social background, and then was enthusiastically engaged in the social support during the First World War and before. And after this, again, very much interested in the question how photography might be an expression for art as well. And so I would say the quality and the importance of her work might be linked to these different points of view. And I think this is also for the future, the very interesting starting point to do more research on her work. Well, thank you very much. All I can say is that these images are absolutely spectacular at many, many levels. The quality is just amazing, but it's the humanity of the images which really, I think, will appeal to everybody. So thank you very much indeed for your time. Kater Buchler's images of the faces of peace and war can be seen at Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery until the 14th of January 2018, as well as at the Aston Webb Building of the University of Birmingham. It will tour to the Grosvenor Gallery at the Holden Gallery, Manchester Metropolitan University, from the 2nd of February to the 1st of March 2018, and then to the University of Hertfordshire Galleries from the 15th of March to the 5th of May. Beyond the Battlefields is organised by the University of Hertfordshire Galleries, the Photomuseum Braunschweig and the AHRC-funded First World War Engagement Centres at the University of Birmingham and the University of Hertfordshire. <laughs>